Today we're going to explore whether your CI pipeline should be aware of your CD pipeline. In order to do that, first we're going to define what continuous integration is. Then we're going to differentiate continuous delivery from continuous deployment. And later on, we're going to discuss how to decouple your CI pipeline from your CD pipeline. Finally, we wrap things up with a few takeaways and open up for Q&A. So, in your mind, what a good CI pipeline should have? Maybe we should start with a version control system, like it or maybe Mercurial. Just don't use SVN, okay, guys? We're in 2024. We also would love to run some tests against the merge code, so maybe we have a lot of unit tests, a few integration tests, some acceptance tests, maybe end-to-end -end tests. Really depends on what type of application uh, you you own and you are wanting to deliver. Maybe you want to run some static code analysis against it as well. So SonarCube is an example, but there, there are other tools that um, do its job as well. You can also build a container image uh, for the application, and that contains application's code, its dependencies. You may store it in a container registry. And this is what continuous integration is all about, is ensuring code that multiple people work on is sane and actually works after merging everyone's contributions. So pretty straightforward. You have a, a globally distributed team Lots of engineers, they all make contributions. A CI pipeline ensures that those contributions are actually moving the software, the application forward, are not uh, breaking it, are not introducing regressions, hopefully. Now that we define what continuous integration is, let's talk about the two CD flavors. Let's start with continuous delivery. In the CI pipeline that we just talked about, our application's code is embedded in the container registry, uh, in a container image, sorry, that's built and stored in a container registry, such as Quay. And this enables us to deploy it in a container orchestration system, such as Kubernetes or OpenShift. And then figuratively speaking, we can press a button, run a deployment config, maybe an Ansible playbook, sometimes a Terraform, um, Configure, uh, infrastructure as a code uh, configuration and get it deployed somewhere. And then that container image is running on an OpenShift cluster. And this is what continu continuous delivery is all about. Your deployments are triggered by manual action. So when you see continuous delivery, you should always think of manual action. I have manual control of my deployments. And what's continuous deployment? What's the other CD flavor? It's the same as continuous delivery, but with no manual trigger. It's automated. So it's full auto. Continuous delivery, you have a manual trigger to deploy to production or to any environment. Continuous deployment is fully automated. So OK, we defined CI, we defined CD. And usually those things are always, uh, they always go together hand in hand. You always talk about your CI, CD pipeline. But does this mean they should be tightly coupled? Of course not. Uh, and let's explore some approaches, techniques, and trade-offs on how you could decouple your CI pipeline from your CD pipeline. So has anyone here worked in a project which had this pattern. You have a dev branch in the repository, and from that dev branch, you deploy to the dev environment. And then you have a, brain, a prod branch, which can be the main branch, and it gets deployed to the uh, prod environment, please. Okay, a lot of people. This is a very common pattern. But can you spot any issues with it? So uh, a lady in the audience uh, said that's double the effort. Um, yeah, but theoretically, you, you could reuse the same, let's say, Ansible playbooks or infrastructure as a code in the, those CI CD pipelines. You're just targeting a different environment. The main issue that I see with this is that it has a tightly coupled CI pipeline with the CD pipeline. It's, it's coupled on the repository level, meaning 
You have a CD pipeline for a very specific branch in Git, for example. So each deployment environment maps directly to one branch. Also, the CI pipeline is coupled with the CD pipeline, meaning that every CI pipeline has one and only CD pipeline. And how is your rollback experience with the, this type of um, setup? You guys have smooth rollbacks. Or rollbacks are a pain in the ass to achieve. <laughs> yeah, that's also an issue. Rollback can be often complicated and might even require reverting git commits and having to change the, the, the git, uh, the code that's already in git. An alternative pattern would be to tr leverage trunk-based development, feature flags, and a tight artifact versioning system. So you could easily decouple the CI pipeline from the CD pipeline, and the decoupling here is achieved by the artifact repository. You only trigger the CI and the build from the uh, main branch, and you store those um, container image, artifacts, etc., in an artifact repository. However, you are always building from the main branch. You might have unfinished code there. You might have unfinished features. What should we do so that those unfinished, buggy, broken things don't reach the actual prod environment? Can anyone tell me? You leverage feature flags. So in order to do something like this, you must have a very strict feature flag system in place and also a very good artifact versioning um, system in place as well. Because you want to say that for the artifact version 1.2, you might have the feature flag enabled, but for the 1.3, you want the feature flag disabled, for example. However, here, rollback is pretty straightforward. You have your artifacts version, so if you need to rollback, you don't need to run CI again. You don't have to change anything in Git. You simply point, let's say, prod or dev to another um, artifact version. Does anyone here have a CI CD pipeline that looks like this? Okay, a few people. So ultimately, it's the artifact repository that enables the decoupling. But the trade-off is you need a feature flag system in order to prevent unfinished code from reaching uh, production and a tight version system in place, or both things at the same time. This happens because you often will share the same code among different environments. You're building from the main branch. So you build a container image, which will reach dev and might reach prod as well with the same code. And to prevent accidental release of incomplete features or buggy features, you're going to need a, uh, a strict artifact control version, uh, con uh, version control and also might leverage feature flags, okay? I'm riffing on this because this is what this pattern is all about, okay? Control about what gets exposed because the code is always getting there. So a concrete uh, example of tight version system control is to employ, for example, Git tags on source control or to employ semantic versioning or artifact or container repository. This is a good example of how you have rolling tags where well, applies to container images, so you might want to use something like this. By the way, this um, slide deck is in uh, pre-talk, so if you want to check this GIF later with time, you'll be able to do so. It's a very cool GIF. Um, and you're probably wondering you now, what approach is best? A lazy answer would be, oh, the couple is always better, but most times having a C a CI CD pipeline that's unaware of the CD pipeline is a good thing. This is an objectively flexible approach, but you have to have an artifact version control system and most likely than not, a feature flag system in place as well in order to successfully implement this. So you require some extra controls in place in order to not worry about that some unfinished feature that for some reason is in main accidentally gets deployed and released to prod. On the other hand, this, um, this, this uh, architecture here, uh, 
why we tightly couple CI with CD, it gives application developers direct control over which code reaches what environment. Because it's tightly coupled with the uh, source control, uh, ver version source control system with Git, but it and might not be always feasible to implement a feature flag system in an application. Maybe you have a very legacy application, which is decades old, which is structurally like this, and implemented a feature flag system in place is simply too much work. It will cost years of man hours and development um, work. So you might simply stick with this and create more branches for other environments. So ultimately, it depends on each case. And now that we discuss how to decouple, let's wrap uh, things up with the main takeaways. First, don't forget the CI-CD split. Uh, if you have trouble remembering uh, what CI and what CD, take a picture of this slide here, because it's in a very succinct way uh, explains what continuous integration, continuous delivery, and continuous deployment are. We can also summarize the pros and cons of having a, a coupled CI-CD pipeline. So when it's coupled, you have direct control over the uh, source code on what reaches what environment. You don't need feature flags, but rollback can be complicated and might be easy to implement a full auto continuous deployment here. However, with the decoupled CI-CD approach, you need a tight artifact versioning system. You might be required to have feature flags in place to prevent unfinished features from reaching uh, prod. It's encouraged to leverage trunk-based development in your, in your Git repository. However, it's a lot easier to roll back, but you might have to jump through some hoops in order to achieve full auto-continuous deployment. And finally, don't forget that what works for application A not necessarily is the best decision for application B. It depends on each application. It depends on your infrastructure, on your team maturity, on your budget, and so on. So apply critical thinking and best judgment and figure out what works best for you. So that was it. What are your questions? No questions. Okay, yes. Okay, so the question is how uh, I would manage configuration for dev and prod in the decoupled or the coupled size? The decoupled. When you say configuration, you're talking about something like how to leverage infrastructure as a code, maybe secrets. Okay, the feature flag system would be something that uh, exists, let's say, as a parallel artifact, as a parallel system to the CI-CD pipeline. I had some projects that I saw, they had a feature flag system for everything. You could create new projects in it. It was basically a huge database. Of course, if that database went belly up, you had to define in your code the default values for each, uh, for each uh, feature flag. But usually it's an external um, service that you use and the application, when it's deployed, requests that database or service, whatever, to check for what the feature flag is. Another type of feature flag injection that I saw was to inject them as environment variables in the container uh, in the containers, so this could be an approach, but also they were stored uh, not in the Git repository, they were stored externally, and during the deployment to the environment, they, got, they would get injected into the container. How exactly, I don't remember, because it was uh, something from AWS EKS, so the nuts and bolts of it, I really don't remember. It was a, a while ago as well, but that was one way of doing it, for example. Okay, and we're out of time. Thank you very much.